Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In his letter to the church at Corinth today, Paul is dealing with his own anxiety. He's seen Jesus on the road to Damascus and been converted to following Jesus. But as he's writing, his ministry in Corinth is under question. He's defending himself, and he's worried. At this point in his life, Paul is expecting Jesus to come back any day then, or any day now. What will happen if he dies before that? He tells the church and what we hear today at the beginning of our lesson, what he says at the beginning of the chapter. We do not lose heart. Paul knows what it's like to be around death. Death has been a part of life since humanity fell, since our bodies became corruptible, since we came from the earth, and to the earth we will return. How then should Paul be prepared for persecutions that he's already starting to face? How then should he be prepared for a possible death before his time? As we're here today remembering Bob, we may be wondering the same things. What comes next? Is Bob okay? Will we be okay? without Bob in our lives? Will we see him again? Will we get to know him through our lives as time marches on for us? Writing to the church at Corinth and writing to the church now, Paul begins, we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. We look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Paul here, talking about wasting away, isn't talking about an immortal soul imprisoned in a mortal body from which it is set free at death. Rather, the inner nature, Paul talks about, is the new life that comes into being with our relationship to Jesus, that comes into being when we become new beings joined to Jesus' resurrection in our baptisms. Our inner nature, our relationship to Jesus, grows day by day as we grow into the full stature and likeness of Jesus. This inner nature, this relationship with Jesus, is something that I knew Bob to have. One of my earliest champions, one of my biggest encouragers in my time here. Bob's relationship with Jesus spoke to Jesus' resurrection from the dead, and his faith spoke to Jesus' triumph over death. That triumph over death is why we're here as well. That triumph over death is why the Paschal candle is burning, symbolizing Jesus' victory over death and the grave. Paul writes that the tints of our lives, these puffs of wind compared to the cosmos, pass away. Paul isn't concerned about growing weak in old age. He's concerned about whether we use our days to share the good news that Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and to those in the tombs bestowing life. These flimsy temporal tents, these bodies that we nourish and sustain, bodies that show us the goodness of God, 
they pass away. Our lives end and the tents are struck. But that is not the end, beloved. Joined to Jesus in our baptisms, death is not the end. Paul writes today that the tents we have now become buildings, permanent structures in our ongoing, ever-growing relationship with Jesus. Like Jesus tells the disciples in today's text from John, where he's gone are many dwelling places, many mansions. No more tents. No more of what we see passing away before us. We're here today remembering Bob and celebrating Easter. Alleluia. Death no longer has dominion, and death is not the end. We grieve the loss of Bob. I miss him, and not being able to see him for the last 18 months didn't help with that. But we know that Christ is raised, and having been joined to his resurrection, we too, with Bob too, shall be raised. We will see Bob again in those many mansions as we grow closer to God. As we're here together remembering Bob, still in our tents ourselves, we still gather to taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen.